Popular Front of India and its anti-India links. And amazingly, almost all of the links lead to Pakistan. Wow. You thought it was all inbuilt, inborn, indigenous movement? Sorry. Indian Muslims are peace-loving people. Every time I say this thing, I get a lot of blowback from you guys saying that, no, 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 it's not true. Some of them are radicalized. And as long as you can sift the grain from the chaff, we should be fine. However, this is not going to be so easy. With every passing day, things are getting harder. But I have a presentation for you put together with data from OSINT, O-S-I-N-T. And, and they have done meticulous research to come up with the links between PFI and many organizations across the world, all of whom seem to trace their roots back to Pakistan. Here we go. So let's take a look at where things start. Let's look at Simi because that is a fountain. From Simi, there was a founding member called Mr. P. Koya, and he also was the founder of National Development Front, NDF, Manida, Manida Nidi Pasarai, and also Karnataka Forum for Dignity and others. This guy was a professor. He used to have some very radical teachings in his classes. Unfortunately, it was not uh, stopped at that point because if it was, a lot of things could have been set right at the beginning itself. Now, from Simi, once Simi was banned, grew this unit called as PFI. In fact, PFI is a merger of three uh, entities, the NDF, the MNP and the Karnataka Forum for Dignity and others. Now, from Popular Front of India, there are founding members, Mr. Abdul Rahman, uh, Nasiruddin and Abu Bakr. And some of these leaders, again, are from Simi. So when Simi got shut down, they just transformed themselves and became members of Popular Front of India. Now, from Simi, one of the founders was Ahmadullah Siddiqui, who partnered with Abdul Malik Mujahid to form this new entity based in the United States called Justice for All. It also has uh, donated $267,000 over a period of years to the USCIRF. And now USCIRF is more or less captured by these people. And therefore, you see all the uh, venom that comes out of USCIRF. It's all fake lies. And they also make sure that a Pakistani-American wrote the report in the 2022 so that they could make India a country of particular concern. What that is going to do, you can see now Ilan Omar, their mouthpiece in the Congress, uh, starting to make noises. But we here will rebut every one of those claims with facts. That is the idea of this particular hangout. So from there, you see the IAMC is also connected with the Justice for All. All of them are lobbying against India. And Mr. Abdul Malik Mujahid is actually a Pakistani-born American today. So that's where things stand. Now, let us take a look at what happened because of the PFI influence in India. We know at least the following three were directly uh, were killed by PFI people. Harsha in Mangaluru, Umesh Kolhe, that is an Amravati, the person uh, Sohail Nadvi, who is the chief of our Amravati district head of PFI. This is the person who actually did the killing of Umesh Kole. And we also know about Ramalingam's case in Sanjavo district. I've dealt with this case at length, how his hand was uh, chopped off and he was made to bleed to death. Very, very gross, grotesque way to kill him. Now, what is happening in the Amravati murder? The NIA has started questioning PFI district chief and they think that this is the person who actually killed them, killed him. Now, you can see that there are other people such as the Sarwar Chishti, Secretary of Anjuman Committee of Khwaja Mohyuddin Chishti Darga Ajmer. He's also giving a provocative speech to disturb the communal harmony and ask for financial boycott of Hindus. See, it's bad enough that these people indulge in these kinds of heinous acts of uh, hacking people. Now, when I already warned that these kinds of things will also turn the majority community against the minority community businesses, here is a minority community person saying, don't go and 
buy at Hindu businesses. Remember, I had said the same thing I warned about a certain Iqbal in Chicago who was saying don't go and shop at Patel Foods. This, this is just nonsense, guys. They don't understand that they are killing their own golden goose. Because once a, a person stops using a certain product, they get used to not using it, and it's very difficult to bring them back. Anyway, I have said my uh, part. It is up to the moderate majority of the Muslim community to step in and make sure that these kinds of venomous statements are not made. Now, all this started from, I said, Simi, right? Now, the Simi, it, its statement said it wants to liberate India through conversion of the country into an Islamic land. So there is active conversion also going on although it may not seem to you that much at the surface we've talked about uh, love jihad we've, they're also doing other kinds of jihad like they say that they will pay somebody's fees if they convert to christianity same thing happens in islam also a very very nefarious activity is going on especially in the state of kerala but i'm seeing now that the same thing is now branching out to other states such as Tamil Nadu and karnataka and also maharashtra Simi was banned in 2008. Now, what happened after that? The whole entity, who the organization moved and morphed into PFI. In 2012, in Kerala High Court, uh, the government informed that PFI is nothing but version 2 of Simi. That is the slide here. You can see that. And then what happened after that is that, like I said, the NDF, MNP and Karnataka Forum for Dignity, all of them merged to form PFI. Now, what is happening is, remember the hijab incident in Karnataka? That also seems to be linked with PFI through its sister organization, Campus Front of India or CFI. So they are out to create trouble. Somewhere, something, keep the pot boiling, somehow create it. And when somebody is caught and acts, they start squealing squealing about uh, victimhood, crying victimhood. And then there is always these mouthpieces like Ilhan Omar's who will start fanning the flames in the United States. The innocent middle of America thinks that there is something justified in this because they look at the USCIR of report. Hmm, it says that and she's actually regurgitating what is there in the USCIR of report. The person who wrote the report never set foot on India, doesn't have any data to back up whatever has been written there except calling for references. These are all fake narratives being created and a grand fake narrative that has become the USCIR of report on India. Now that is beginning to have a life of its own. Here you can see that two names that we talked about, they were part of the ICNA organization. What is ICNA? Islamic Council of North America. You see how this is going? one to the other, one to the other. This is the same set of people. You'll start seeing them showing up in every place. Now, what is very, very interesting is they have been targeting India for a long time. And they finally used this one organization that I told you, Justice for All, uh, to fund $267,000, around that amount, between the period of 2018 to 2020, to lobby the USARF to make India a, cut, a country of particular concern. A lot of questions that I've asked in a previous hangout, why is the USCIRF taking money from a private entity and that means that their work is tainted? Absolutely, I'll make that call. Their, their work is tainted. They should have not touched it. They are a part of the United States government. They are basically being funded by taxpayer, such as me. I demand to know why the heck did they go and go and take funding from outside? That was wrong. Anyway, that is just my uh, two cents. Now, what we are going to see next is that there will be more organizations because as and when you start, you know, honing in on one, they realize that, oops, our game is up now. So let's go and try and morph into a different organization. So the same playbook same playbook whether it is india or the united states or the united kingdom or europe same playbook same set of individuals perhaps on the payroll of isi perhaps on the payroll of pakistan we don't know that part has to be established by investigating agencies all we are saying here is what is available in open source it's available on google it is just that somebody has done the research and we have corroborated and we, we have 
we have cross checked and found that many of the things that they are saying are indeed true again it is uncle google to our help so this is where things stand now you have this new organization called justice for all that is suddenly suddenly beginning to come to the front but i told you if you look at the first slide that i put up justice for all is also the same set of people who are dealing with that so come back you take a look at what is there now small set of players indulging in spewing venom against india and somehow managing to stay one step ahead of the law this is really the long and short of it they seem to somehow know when their game is up and they seem to pull their stakes up go to another place rename themselves and start all over again thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel and if you would like to fill some ink into our pen feel free to donate to our cause you can do that by going to paypal.me/pgurus or you could uh, click on the super thanks button and uh, donate whatever you feel it was worth your time in understanding about this organization the pfi the set of radicalized muslims who seem to be out to wreak havoc on india with the tacit support of people from pakistan thanks once again and namaskar